evening. Uh, yeah. That being said, I will uh, turn this over to you, sir. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the April 19th, 2021 regularly scheduled Berlin Select Board meeting. Um, uh, additions or changes to the agenda, Vince? Uh, the only um, change to the agenda is uh, we said that there may be an executive session. There will not be an executive session this evening. Okay. And uh, I've I printed and print out everything very well here. Uh, uh, any public comment? Hearing none. Um, next up is working in the right of way. Permit application review for East Road. Oh, I should have that open, but I can't uh, you find it. Working right away permit. There it is. Okay, that is um, for Mr. Michaud on uh, one one on East Road. Correct. In Berlin. And what's the application for? For a driveway, we're building a single family residential home. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion on this? We have a discussion. I'd make a motion to approve the permit as presented. Second. Okay, on the discussion, um, Vince, uh, did uh, Tim go? up and look at it and uh is there any covert or any other requirements i've spoke with tim on the phone i haven't met with him at the actual construction site i don't know if he he mentioned someone um stopping by to look at the the site prior to this meeting but no one has made any mention to me i suspect a culvert will be needed and my my uh builder for doing the site work also suspects one will be needed yeah. Um, but I'm not sure if anyone from the town has determined what size. Uh, the, Tim should of, be on. Tim should be with us tonight, Brad. Yeah. Some some time ago, um, I think we took and put a, 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 a minimum diameter of 18 inches on culverts. Yes. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't have a map here in front of me to see the see your uh, building site, but I'm assuming that it, uh, you have to cross a ditch to get to get to your property. A very shallow one. You can drive. I've driven the, the pickup truck into the, the field many times with no issue. So it's very shallow, but essentially there is a, a bit of a ditch there. Yeah. All right. OK. Um, I believe that over the years, the town has actually diverted the water to the other side of the road. So, so most of the water that runs down that section of East Road is actually on the other side of the road. Okay. There's Tim. We're, yeah, Tim, we're discussing the uh, Mashad's uh, permit for uh, right of way, working in the right of way. Yeah. Uh, do you, I know that at some point the town had said that uh, a minimum uh, culvert diameter of 18 inches, is that going to be excessive, sufficient? It's going to be ex uh, excessive for that spot there. Um, there's going to be, I would say, a, a, at minimum of a 15 for where their driveway is going to be. I'm assuming from the grade stakes and everything else, I was up there the other day. Uh, right by the apple trees, by the shipping containers is where the driveway is going to go in there. Yeah. So there's not, it's pretty close to the top of the hill, but you know what I mean? A 15 inch culvert in there should be good as long as they don't run into ledge. It is kind of rocky. There is some sections of ledge right there. So should be all right in getting in, getting a 15 in right there. Okay. So you're you need it's not a very deep ditch, so an 18 is going to yeah. be over excessive. Yeah, so you you deem 15 is adequate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else on this? I'm good there. Um, this 
it's good sight distance in both directions for that driveway. So, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if they're planning on leaving those apple trees on the side and there, there is some trees there, but there's good sight distance in both directions at that driveway. So there's besides putting culvert in, I think they should be good to go. Okay. Is there a minimum? Sorry about that, Brad. Is there a minimum width of the, the culvert that you're putting in up here? The width? I don't believe there's a minute. The requirement from the town, um, of course, uh, for them to to put the culvert in, I would think they'd have it at least long enough so they could get trucks in there. That that was one thing I wanted to mention. The um, Walker Construction out of Waterbury Center is who I'm working with for the site work. And he mentioned wanting to do uh, a 30 foot mouth essentially where the driveway will meet East Road because our home is a modular that's 28 by 60 and it's coming in two pieces. So we're gonna have 60 foot long uh, house pieces coming in and they're gonna need to be able to make that turn from East Road onto the driveway. So I don't know if there's any discussion that needs to be had about that 30 foot mouth. I don't know if they can cut it down um, once the Norm house gets delivered. Well, normally, you know what I mean? If you guys do all your site work and set the house and then at the end when they're, before they're done and picking up, they put the culvert in and, and establish the end of your driveway would be a good recommendation and then because like it is it's not that it's pretty gradual off the road into that field there so um that way that they don't end up you see a lot of times when they do that they'll mess the culvert up because they'll get over the end of it and they'll crush the end of the pipe if they yeah. went to put the pipe in until the house has already been set and then you get your 20 foot piece of pipe and your 20 foot driveway and then you're not you're not paying for them to dig the dirt back up that they're going to put in there to get the house in you know what i mean so can they can they at least create yeah the, the driveway and make it so that it's a smooth path over the the ditch for the delivery of the house they just won't put the culvert in until after the house is delivered <laughs> yeah that should be all right i wouldn't see that there being a problem there okay uh, typically the ones we've done in the past on any of these culverts we use 20 feet minimum of culvert gives you 14 feet of driveway with three inches, three feet clear either side of your driveway. So you don't crush those pipes. Yep. Trucks coming in in the future or while they're doing construction. It sounds to me like they can create a, a drive prior to putting the culvert in and then put the culvert in at the end. Gotcha. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor of, the, of allowing the permit? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. There you go. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. Um, I posted for the uh, Conservation Commission a snowmobile survey on the website. I did that on Friday, so if anybody wants to visit that. And also today, I posted um, their, um, for their meeting for Wednesday at 2 o'clock for the Conservation Commission. I put that on the website today. So if anybody wants to join that, um, it's at 2 o'clock, like I say, on April 21st. And that's all I've got. Okay, thank you, Diane. Um, hilltop end discussion. Vince? Yep, that's really, um, <clears throat> that's really with our chief. He might have a few things to say about that. <laughs> um, the hilltop continues to be a large consumption of our resources over here. Um, Sergeant was over there this weekend, and it was just one litany of problems after another um, that aren't really being reported to us unless we're over there, and then we just get a huge full of all the things that are going on over there. Some of them are very concerning. So, 
sexual-based offenses, drug offenses, violence. Um, I know Vince is working on trying to get us some additional funding to offer um, of coming out of our budget for having to deal with all those problems. But it doesn't seem to be lessening, it just seems to be getting worse. <sighs> Vince, have, have you looked into um, the state requirements for habitability over there or anything like that? I haven't looked at habit, habitability uh, requirements, but I, I've talked to uh, several different agencies along with the a state um, chasing the referrals that I get um, to follow this up to see what's out there to give us some assistance uh, for the chief and his, and his team. Um, right now, uh, I'm waiting on the, uh, on Bonnie Waninger from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. She has a very good, uh, good lead right now on, on a couple of possibilities, uh, that we may be able to get some funding to help support, uh, the additional cost, uh, that we're bearing because of this, uh, for, for the chief. Uh, I expect to hear something in the next week or so, uh, back from her on that, um, but other than that, um, every, every avenue that I've gone down um, has basically been a dead end. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's uh, we'd like to help you, but there's not much that we can do for you with regards to this. Uh, so um, I've got a lot of hope it, that uh, the Regional Planning Commission and some of their leads, uh, one of the last couple that we've got left come through for us, but um, it's, it's, uh, it's not a good, situation right now uh, for the chief and for the resources. Um, out of curiosity, the tenants, renters, um, the state is paying the, the, the room rents on this? What yeah. Was the, what was the, Go ahead, Chief. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the, what the question was. Is, is the uh, state paying room rents on this? Uh, they're paying some kind of agreed upon rent for the rooms. It's like $80 a night <clears throat> for the residents there. So the owner of the hotel is making, I assume he's making a substantial amount of money every month. We have anywhere between 70 to 75 occupants at the hotel under this program at $80 a night. Chief, how is the owner to work with? Is it as a management or the owner? Do they have any communications with them directly? No, he's been largely absent. In fact, um, a few weeks ago, there was an act of vandalism over there. There was a picture window or something broken, uh, some kind of ongoing dispute between one of the residents there and another party um, who subsequently got arrested for that. But they broke this picture window it hasn't been fixed, to my knowledge. Economic services came to me to ask me what I could do about getting the window fixed. Because it's been weeks now, four weeks. There's just a tarp covering it. And so that should show you kind of where the owner is at. Not taking, in my opinion anyway, not taking really any responsibility for the property over there. Had, do you know, I mean, has anybody been in contact with uh, labor and industry Fire Prevention Division to, to, with the life safety issues up there? Um, fire Prevention has been through there um, because of an incident we had a few weeks ago. I noticed uh, a number of violations, but not anything where they would shut the place down, uh, but violations where they brought it to the manager's or the owner's attention. Um, it was my understanding that the owner was supposed to be there with us while we did that walkthrough, but he didn't, didn't show up, didn't make it. Okay. So at this point, Chief Belt, the only thing we can do is uh, is kind of chase the money. It would be helpful if we had some compensation for the amount of overtime we're putting in over there. Um. Yeah. 
and the state isn't going to take responsibility for their tenants under this program. I'm not really sure what they can do. It is what it is. I don't expect this that we would shut the place down and displace people because they, they need a place to live. But the reality is that it's having an impact on services. Um, and although and I brought this to Vince's attention, I was curious to how many times they been out there. But as you know, we contract with Barry Town. Fortunately for you guys, they contract per capita of actual residents of Berlin and how many people are living there at the time. Um, because they've gone from something like 12 calls prior to economic services housing um, people up there at the hotel to something like 41 calls. And in this quarter alone, it's been 43, 46, something like that. So dramatic increase from one year to, from the previous year. And then just in this quarter alone, which calls for the ambulance up there as we did the entire, entirety of last year. Um, so it has an impact on us. It's having an impact on the ambulance services. I imagine it's having an impact on the hospital. Um, so they kind of put this program up there without any infrastructure to go along with it. So what you're looking for is just compensation for the overtime you're, you're spending up there, or are you looking for something a little more uh, permanent? Ideally, we treat the problem like almost like having a school resource officer. You have somebody who's embedded in this facility who is kind of the liaison or the go-to person for problems. Um, currently, they act as a deterrent because of their presence, but also they're familiar with the people who are there. They're familiar with some of the problems and they're better equipped to deal with it, um, which frees up the rest of the department to kind of do their thing and respond to calls if needed. Unfortunately, even if they were to provide us funding like that, I don't have the staffing to, to deal with it. Uh, that's kind of the other issue is that we're barely able to cover shifts as it is now, let alone have an officer dedicated for two or three hours at a time for a problem over there. Now we have that officer dealing with something going on at the hilltop and not able to go to calls that might be coming in for the rest of Berlin. Hey, Chief, I know in the past in, in other towns or, or, or small cities around these, these certain, I don't know how they've done it on an ordinance or something of these nightclubs where they're required to have security or a paid, paid law enforcement officer on duty at certain times. Is there some kind of ordinance or something that we could look at that would possibly help out up there to, to defer that cost back onto the, uh, the owner? The state is paying for security that's some presence up there. And they were having a contract with the sheriff's department from a neighboring county to have a visible presence up there as well. Uh, but neither of those entities are able to do anything. Once something happens, they call us. So they're purely as a visible presence. And I've heard some rather disturbing things lately about some of the security on some. Um, which makes me really question the value of that. Yeah. Let's say security to the point where some of the issues brought to our attention could very well end up in criminal charges. Um, Engaging in the, yeah. And that, that's security personnel working at the hotel that we may have to have a conversation with about their conduct. Sure. Does the state police come, Chief, and assist you in any regard? Um, the agencies that we rely on for, if there's some kind of major event there, Barry City has always been very good about coming up and assisting us. Uh, but as far as... Mm -hmm. Oh, 
can you come up here and help us? It's not really fair to put that on another community that also has to police their own. Yeah, but to answer your question, uh, I'm not not providing assistance to us. Well, I commend you and your staff and everything that you're doing. And I think we need to put our heads together in terms of what we can come forward to do to assist you for sure. Appreciate you. you expressing it and letting us know. Thank you. Oh. Tom, Brad, Tom asked a good question. If, um, if a municipality can bill for excess services. I don't know the answer to that, but I can. I think that's a great question, and I can follow up, and I can uh, and see what uh, what I can find out about that if that's even a possibility. I think I would, that's a good question. I would I would think any 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 um, any uh, establishment that is a chronic problem. Um, I would think that they should uh, they should be billed for the services that they're taking from the town. Um, I'm just trying to think if, I think uh, David may have had the right idea with the ordinance type of thing, you know, um, three calls a month and uh, anything after that, you start, uh, you start uh, the uh, meter running basically. All right. And then, if you if you did it that way and put it to, and uh, and built decided to build the owner, then perhaps things might straighten out a little bit. But right now, I mean, uh, the owner has no um, other than uh, keeping the heat on. Basically, if he if they're even doing that, is um, is uh, free and clear. So Vince, what we'll have to do is. Um, is see if uh, we can if it's if it's legal for us to enact an ordinance on um, on excessive uh, drain on, yep excessive drain on uh, town resources yep I, I will uh, I will take a look into that see what I can find out other than that chief I don't know what we can do for you um, other than tell you to keep up the good fight. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, I mean, we'll try to do what we can for you. I appreciate that. And just to be clear, it, it's not that these issues are out of the ordinary. It's just, I think it's more impactful because we're such a small community. And then yeah. that concentration, all of a sudden of a population that we weren't really um, kind of set up to have to address. Well, I mean, the state program or the federal program that this is under, uh, I think it was a very rushed job and very poorly conceived. Excuse me, Brad. Sure, Tom. There, there may be a way from, even from the zoning standpoint, because when, when um, facilities get permitted, especially that go through the DRB process, they're required to address impacts of municipal services. And, um, and so we, we talked about uh, the ticketing ordinance for, to our zoning, uh, app, uh, zoning, new zoning. Here may be a, a candidate where you could use that. And so I think the, the, the quicker we may get that, that ticketing thing on board, the, 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 the better. I, I think we're really close on that. It's just a, a, another, another tool in the toolbox. Yeah. Any, how far out are you on that, Tom? Any idea? I really think we're there, Brad. I have uh, several conversations with folks from municipalities that, that have had this. I think we have everything we need. I think Chief was looking at a separate municipal uh, ticketing book for just zoning things. Um, it's, uh, I think, really the staff getting together, putting our heads together, um, and, and coming up with a, with a game plan. I've attended some some webinars recently, and I and I believe we're at our month month in uh, staff meeting. That those webinars really talked about how how municipalities can do some of this stuff. Yeah. 
Okay, anything else on this, Chief? No, I don't think so. Well, well, we'll do what we can for you. Thank you. Yep, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Good night. Thank Good night. You. Okay, board and commission appointments, uh, Vince? Yes, there are a number of them tonight in your in the package that I sent out. Uh, I can I can tell you who they are and what they are if you like. We can start with um, the cemetery commission. We have an appointment for Michael Baginski as a member. Uh, he was uh, he, he sent a letter of uh, interest. Uh, we uh, put him in touch with the the current members of the of the committee and uh, asked them to. Uh, to speak with them and give their recommendation. And he was uh, recommended by the uh, current members of the committee as well. Is he the only one for the cemetery commission? He is the only one for the cemetery commission uh, right now. Well, when we go through these, if these, if the commission is, uh, is all right with it, uh, hear a motion to appoint. I make the motion to appoint Michael Baginski as a member to the Cemetery Commission. I would second that. Any other discussion on this uh, subject? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. So just a, just a point to your point, Brad. Um, each one of these appointments, uh, the members have been uh, in contact with the current members of the committee that they're interested in. Um, I asked members of the committee to reach out to them and, and come back with a recommendation. So they have all been uh, talked with by the respective committees they're interested in by members of it. Okay, well, I think, I think the easiest way to do this, Vince, is uh, go through it uh, committee by committee and uh, we will take in uh, <coughs> Uh, discuss the uh, each appointment and uh, vote at the time. Very good. So the next one uh, is for the Development Review Board, and it's Polly McMurdy um, has expressed interest for that. Anyone else? That's the only one. Okay. For the DRB okay. motion. I mean. Well, I think your speaker went off on you. <laughs> I'll second that motion. Well, <laughs> let's let's get the full motion here. I, I want a name. Yeah. <laughs> Flo, you want to take and make the motion again? Flo, you're on mute. If you can hear us. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, fantastic. I make the motion to appoint Polly McMurtry to the Development Review Board. And I'll Great. second that motion. Any other discussion? All just one, excuse me, Brad, just one thing. Polly is currently in an alternate, so this is making her a, a permanent position. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Tom, uh, how many other uh, alternates do you have on the DRB? There are two uh, remaining alternates on the DRB. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, Vince. The next appointment is for the Planning Commission, and that is Tony Snow. He's the only one for tonight for the Planning Commission. And I would make a motion to accept Tony Snow for the Planning Commission. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Nick Spence. And the last one for tonight is for the Recreation Committee, and it's Krista Zabriskie. I'd make a motion to accept Krista Zabriskie to the Recreation Committee. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
The motion carries. That's and it for appointments tonight. Okay, very good, Vince. Thank you. Um, local option assessment. Would would you would you care to take and uh, explain this to us, Vince? Well, um, Tom Tom briefed me earlier. He sat through um, uh, a briefing on this, and currently. Uh, state legislation is looking at raising their uh, sales and use tax uh, by 1% to subsidize, I guess is probably the appropriate word that comes to mind, uh, the, the towns and municipalities in lieu of having a local options tax um, currently. So it's in discussion in legislation at this point. Um, my thoughts on that, after discussing it a little bit with Tom, uh, our thoughts, I should say, um, since, and I think also, uh, Tom will speak to this, the Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns also recommends that if we're, uh, a municipality is in the process of, of pursuing that now, that they still continue, because, again, we don't know um, what we don't know re regarding the state, how long that may be implemented. So, uh, even though we may gain an advantage from the state earlier by getting this in place, uh, we should continue with our uh, pursuit of this to get our charter change done. So should the state repeal that or change that, we're in a position to, uh, to put it right back in place locally as well. Tom, did, did you want to comment to that at all? Did you look into, do we need to do a charter change or is it yes, already? Sir. Yes, we, we do. do. Okay. We do. I have confirmed that. So yes, I just concur the, the, the meeting today with Vermont Leagues, Leagues of City and Town um, said there's an initiative to, I, I believe, to raise the existing sales tax by 1% and that then those monies would be uh, used to uh, for municipalities for, for their local purposes, minus dollars that the state would take out to pay for their various pilot programs. It's very similar to uh, uh, what the system is for, on an in, individual municipality my municipality basis. The, the discussion was the likelihood that if that comes to fruition, that the, the state would uh, consider null and voiding existing local, op, local option taxes. But again, as Vince pointed out, uh, the League of City Towns said, there's no guarantee that that 1% will be there into perpetuity and that municipalities should um, uh, actually uh, uh, look at that and, and plan accordingly and, and recommend and keep doing what you're doing to, if you're going to, uh, looking at adopting a local options tax, keep it going. The, the question I have, Tom, uh, um, if, if uh, the state does it, does raise it to a 7% and, and gives back to the municipalities, whatever, are they going to uh, pool the money and divide it that way? Or are they going to take and use the, the actual sales figures from each town to, uh, to, re, to, to redistribute the money? Brad, I don't know, it, know the answer to that. This is, this is in committee now, the discussions at the sure. state. Um, and it, I, I haven't heard any specifics on the details outside of what I reported. Yeah, the the only thing that worries me is is we have a we have a fair uh, retail base in town. If we do not pursue this and rely on the state, I would be afraid that the state may pool the money and divide it to towns who have uh, very little retail base also. And uh, so we would actually be losing out on. Uh, a certain percent of our of our uh, uh, retail uh, sales, the, the return on it. Um, what um, I think what we need to do is uh, is um, is encourage Vince to uh, to uh, uh, see what we. We need to do to change our um, uh, charter to take and be able to uh, 
to be able to um, uh, chase after the, the local option assessment. I think I, I just I just worry we may lose out uh, by having all the money pooled and uh, and uh, the state redistributing it that way because there are several towns around here now that don't have any retail base to speak of. No, I Brad, this is Vince. I I agree. I think we need to continue down what we've started right now um, for the local options tax. So I'll get you some some further details of what's required with regards to the charter change and um, having to go to vote with this as well. Um, yeah. Thank you, Vince. So that'll take in, uh, if you do that, Vince, we'll, hopefully we'll be able to take and keep going down the, the uh, yellow brick road, so to say. <laughs> um, Anything else on this, Vince? No, nope, nothing else for me, Brad. Thank you. Okay. Um, highway superintendent, discussion of uh, class two road paving bid. Tim? <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's, we got quotes to repave um, Tim, well, the junction Tim? road is a. What's that? I I have the uh, quote open in front of me. I can tell you the. Uh, if you don't have it handy, I've got the road and the uh, dollar amount. I don't have it handy, but we got a quote to do a full reclaim on the junction road from the city line to where the blacktop ends now, um, and then we got a quote to overlay and reshim the airport road to apply for the class two grant money that's out right now. We're in the process of applying for. Um, Vince has got the numbers for those. Yeah, the, the airport road quote was uh, 237,618. And the quote for the junction road was 156,712. And again, a copy of the quote is in the package that was uh, that was sent to the board as well. Were there any other roads? Uh, Granger Road and Scott Hill Road also received quotes. But their Granger Road and Scott Hill aren't class two. Correct. So the state right now with the state, that's a it, the grant that we're applying for is for a class two highway only. It's a road that goes from one town to another passing through this town. Yeah. So. And how much is the how much is the grant going to be for? Um. I think it's up to their discretion. We ask, you know what I mean, we'll ask for a certain amount, whether we get the full amount is, you know what I mean? I, I would have to double check on that, Brad, but I think there's a cap at 175, 175,000 on the grant. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a uh, hundred percent positive on that, but that's what I recall. I call reading some things on that uh, with, with regards to that. So there may be a cap and I can, uh, I will, uh, I will get you that information. Tim, what's the uh, how much how much did the uh, voters allow you for the uh, repaving fund? Uh, I th think it was approved for a hundred and forty-five thousand. Diane, I believe we took the when we when we did budgets, we took uh, five thousand off of that. So if the cap is at 100, you said 175 and we got 145. So that's um, 200, 300, 310, 320,000. Yeah. So by theory, you could take and do both roads. If we get the grant, yes. 
Are these grants, you know, if this grant is set up with the percentage uh, of project thing, or is it just uh, you ask for the 175 and uh, I would think that probably they're set up with some kind of percentage percentage of participation. I could be wrong, but no, you're correct. I believe it's twenty percent. So, so then in reality, if it's two something, we're only could get forty fifty thousand roughly for a grant. So that that that's a lot less than what we needed. I mean, okay. if I'm calculating that right, well, we still even if. Even if you have a copay of uh, twenty percent, if you get the maximum grant, you still have one hundred and forty-five thousand budgeted in the town budget for repayment. Correct. Correct. So one hundred forty-five that gives you one one eighty-five one ninety. Unless I'm doing some math wrong here, but is that is that the way I understand it, or you understand it to be? Well, if if you get if the if the mac well for ease of, of figuring if say say the the actual uh, amount for um, the grant is one hundred and seventy five thousand, we also have one hundred and forty five thousand in our own budget for repaving. Correct, but what. A what I was leading to is, is this grant that you're only going to be awarded up to 20, 20% uh, participation. So if say the project is 200,000, you're only going yeah, to get 40,000 grant is what the way I understand it to be. But like, like I said, I'm not, that's how most of these grants work. Yeah. I see if what you're saying. Is 200, yeah. $200,000 project. And you can apply for a grant up to twenty percent. They're going to give you forty thousand as grant money. So that's that's the way I understand it to be. But I, I will get clarity on that for you. But even even so, if, even if they only go to um, if they they only do if they're doing an eighty percent uh, or if they're looking for a twenty percent match. Um, They would still be, they would still be putting. Well, we, it would it would depend on if, if they're willing to take and put up the uh, the funding for both roads instead of just. Oh, I would think they would look at it as a, pro, uh, a one project, but possibly not. And the total of both projects were was two forty. Was that what I understood? Two twenty or something like that. What what was the what were the two projects cost again, Tim? Vince has the numbers. Um, let me let me pull them up again the here. Quote. Sure. <clears throat> One is a hundred and, but we also we don't have to do both. We just we got Junction Road. Junction quote. Road was one fifty six seven one two. Yeah. Airport Road. Two hundred thirty-seven thousand six eighteen. So the the airport road, that part of it would be from the airport back to the Barry Town line. Yeah, it's been ten years, roughly, since the last time I had anything done to it. Um, so but you're at it's not. Sorry about that. that. 400,000 in projects that the grants you could possibly get is like 80,000, 80, 80 something thousand max, I believe. Okay. It's the way I understand it to be, but like I said, I could be wrong. So the, the, the state's only doing a 20% match, not an 80% match? No, I think we're doing a 20% match. The state does uh, 80. Okay. All right. Then. And that's different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> different numbers. So yeah. Well, I would take and I would encourage you, Tim, to uh, to apply for both and see what happens. Well, that, yeah. So we're you know I mean we're gonna we're gonna put in for every and take what we get and you know I mean. Yeah. The Junction Road is in a little bit more of a out of shape per se than the airport due to the the heavy traffic between. 
uh, Ireland running down there and the gas company being down there now. So it's starting to show its wear from the weight of the vehicles. Yeah. yeah. The sides are really starting to bow out, be pushed out from the weight. So, yeah. Well, right. The ditch right there along by Capitol steel. That's, um, that's, uh, I'm surprised it hasn't given up more than it has. I thought it was, I thought it was holding up fairly well. But. Yeah, we cleaned we cleaned it last year. It was quite full, but um, I think it was either late late fall or sometime in the winter they cleaned the lines down there, so they cut all the trees out of there. Yeah, then um, it's opened it up quite a bit, so it could be. We could clean it again, and if we get to pave it, we'll clean it one more time before we pave it, and uh, hopefully dry it up some. Yeah, there's quite a bit of water that comes out from behind there in the um, where the gas company is too. A lot more than I would have thought would have come out from there. Yeah, a lot of spring runoff in there. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. Yep. Thank you for your efforts, Tim. Um, take in, uh, let uh, Vince know how you make out if you yep. need help or anything. Okay, hey, thank you, Tim. Okay. Uh, now, let's see here. Um, Okay, Brook Road, Brookfield Road, signage and, and parking discussion. Vince? Yes, so that was uh, that was brought last week by one of the other board members to be on this, uh, this agenda tonight. Um, the, the basic uh, topic of discussion was, you know, with the increased parking and walking, um, the parking on the crest of the hill uh, by the Darling Trail entrance, uh, parking area. Um, they were board members and, and, and me to some extent have been getting some calls uh, regarding that. They wanted to have a discussion tonight about um, possible signage and also um, speed limits that uh, could be enforced as well. Because uh, right now um, there isn't a, a enforceable limit on the Brookfield Road um, in support of the, the, the police. Uh, so I have started the, the, uh, the ball rolling on that. There are some requirements in the Orange Book from the state on how to properly um, assess the um, recommended limits. So that's in place. I've actually got uh, uh, the chief's gonna have one of his guys out there with a radar gun. Uh, taking some sampling as well. I've got some road measurements to do uh, and, a, and a, like anything, a couple of state forms to fill out uh, to make it uh, a an enforceable speed limit. So again, if it, what the, all that means is if, if our members of the force stop someone on the road and it goes to court, it can, uh, it can be defended. Currently, uh, right now, the chief's uh, understanding is that we don't have a policy that is defendable in court so if they if they don't pay the fine and want to challenge it in court nine times out of ten we're going to lose uh, but I think uh, that that's on the speed limit that's a little bit off topic of what they really wanted to discuss I believe was um, types of signage to put up uh, and no parking uh, areas that should be uh, posted with proper signs as well for no parking Again, the uh, example is the Darling Hill access area. The And you said there was some uh, problems with parking down by the boat launch? Uh, yeah, there, there, uh, there has been some, uh, some issues there too. You know, there's a, a barrier and some signs there now uh, that uh, typically on any good given day on a weekend, uh, people ignore and they, and they park there. 
Um, can I add something for that? <laughs> of course. We, we have an extreme problem in the wintertime uh, trying to plow right there at the Brookfield and Payne Turnpike South entrance where the boat launch is, that parking lot. They pull up to the side of the road like they're parking the front of the car to the curb and they take up half of the road uh, and then take off walking. Um, and we've had them go over quite a few times this winter, but there really isn't nothing the police department can do per se, I guess. Whatever they have is got no teeth from what I've been told, but um, it, it, it's causing a concern on all departments. Even in the summertime, when we try to grade, we'll have the road half graded and people will just pull up and park right next to the windrow. <laughs> and then, you know, I mean, we got to try to, we either have to leave it and wait until somebody comes back and moves the car or try to find somebody to tow it. So um, that's. It is, is the uh, question there on in, in both spots is a lack of no parking signage or is there something no. like this? I know, I know for a fact, like by the Brookfield where the, the first parking lot right at the boat launch, there's no parking signs. Um, I think they're about every 80 feet or so all the way down past the Montpelier pump house on that Brookfield road, all the way down that side of the road. Um, and I had a sign made last fall um, with some, with an arrow and, you know, showing that this was the end of the, you know, I mean, end of the beginning of the no parking and it didn't, it didn't help. Um, and this, this signage, the signage that's up now, it's not enforceable? I'm not sure. Vince has talked with the police department a little bit more than I have about it, but. Um, well, I'm just curious, uh, does the signage need to say no parking, violators will be towed? Uh, it does. It, or, it, does say, it does say that. It does. Yeah, it does. It does. Got a number of a tow company? <laughs> <laughs> Got a few of them. Well, I mean, realistically, that's the only way the, the uh, people are going to pay attention is if they start seeing their buddy's car go down the road behind a wrecker. Yeah. The, 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 issue, the issue from the police standpoint is there are some state guidelines that we have to meet to make it enforceable should somebody challenge the ticket or the towing. Um, so that that's what okay. I'm working on. That's what I'm working on right now. Um, with the, with the police, uh, again, they're, they're helping out. They're going to go out and do the, uh, the speed measurements and things. Um, but, uh, the signage as well also needs to be done in a similar fashion. So, uh, we need, we need to get that done and get it completed so that, uh, and I haven't gone far enough yet, but there may even be some ordinances that we need to, uh, create, which there's a template for, uh, to make them enforceable. That sounds good. Thanks, Vince. Um, the the other thing would be um, uh, if if we're going to, if I'm wondering if we shouldn't take in uh, and look at uh, the uh, how uh, the uh, oh the area that we. Have have to patrol because some of that part where the people park there by the boat launch, some of that is in Montpelier, isn't it? Or Montpelier's property? I, I believe the boat launch is uh, is well, that state the state. But on the other side, then you have the boat launch, and then you have a, a section that Berlin controls that we allow parking at. Yeah, and then you have Montpelier goes beyond that, and yeah, by I think, the pump house. Yeah. Yeah, well, our, the, the parking stops long before the pump house, but again, people still park there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if they're parking in the boat launch, that's on the state. That's not our problem. Because the when they put the boat <laughs> launch in, it was it was said to uh, it was uh, it was for uh, boat launch only. 
Yeah. And from my perspective, if, if Fish and Game wants to keep it for boat launch only, they can control it. Yeah. That's not really the problem. The problem is alongside Brookfield Road. I mean, there are, there are times when I know in the winter it was, uh, it was down to one lane basically because of the way people were parking as Tim mentioned earlier and in the in the summer it's uh on a good good weekend um there's a stretch of cars right down through there as well making it maybe a lane and a half in some yeah. area in some, in some sections right there yeah. i think that you're on the right step is getting the right right parameters and the the requirements to get that posted legally so that if we do tow something the town's not paying over, you know, if it's disputed, paying the tow bills. Um, Correct. And I, I wouldn't think that uh, it would be that hard to meet whatever guidelines that uh, they need, it, whether it's putting an ordinance in place or uh, or whatever. It's just getting those guidelines and 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 get active on it so that we're not not revisiting this issue in the in the future. Yeah. Uh, and just on those notes, I just want to throw that out because I, I've had a couple of calls with regards to Richardson Road for a, a similar concern. Um, they're looking to see if they can get some signage uh, on that road as well with the with speed limit um, and dead end notices, because uh, they're telling me, you know, they're there. There are people that just are, are flying down that road uh, at that over 35, 40 miles an hour on Richardson as well. And then they'll, they'll watch them because they think they're going to go through. Uh, and then they come flying back just a few minutes later. Right. Tim, when was the last uh, traffic count done on, uh, on uh, Brookfield Road? Uh, I couldn't tell you on that one. I don't even know if there ever has been. That's um, a great question, Brad. I do well, have an email. I was going to set one up once things dry out for the Riverton side of Crosstown, but I can definitely get a hold of somebody and see if they'll put a counter on um, either I can or Vince can, but I have an email for the people who did the last one that I have records for. Yeah. Well, I just think it'd be, it, it always fascinates me as to how many cars actually go down some of these roads. <laughs> It, I it's mean, amazing. It's I, can imagine. I, can what, what, I, I can tell you, Crosstown, Tim and I had had this discussion, Brad, and I think it was three three years ago, and Crosstown was averaging about a thousand cars a day. Yeah. But I mean, it, it, it some of the traffic ago. count, yeah, <laughs> some of the traffic counts you get on the Barry Montpelier Road are just, you wonder how cars can go down there. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I would take in. I would. I would think that uh, perhaps getting a, a couple of traffic counts on that on those roads too, because it would help. It would help, um, especially if you're putting in a, a speed limit. Um, it would help to have a number of uh, a. a um, I won't say a valid number, but a a. a Current number of uh, of uh, traffic on on these roads, so we have an idea we can justify some of our uh, concerns. Yeah. Well, if you can get that done, anything else on this, Tim? No. Um, you know, I mean, we just need to be able to enforce the what we got parkings that we have, and you know, I mean, like Vince said, there's been times where we can barely get through with a dump truck in the winter time to plow the road with the ditch on the opposite side, the way that they park. I mean, they don't even park with the flow of traffic. They park broadside to the flow of traffic. Wow. I, I've never seen anything like it in my life, but they do it. Yeah. Well, okay, then we'll take and uh, see what we can do for you. Uh, boy, Vince, you're getting a lot of stuff to do. I love you guys. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tim. We right appreciate it. Right back at you, Vince. <laughs> Thanks. We'll see you guys. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, thank Tim. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. Okay. Um, next. Uh, next is Conservation Commission 
update and vast and and administrative support discussion, Vince? Yeah, I don't see uh, Phil on here tonight. It's, this is Wendy. Um, Phil okay. couldn't make it, so I'm here, but I don't really have anything to present. Um, I can tell you our status as far as um, snowmobiling. Um, but he didn't give me, he, I think he just had a granddaughter born. Um, he did. Yes, that's what I thought. Um, so he didn't give me any information. I can give you a quick update on the snowmobile, where we're at with that, but I can't really give you much of an update on the administrative portion okay. of it. Okay, I, I, I can talk a little bit to the administrative, but go ahead if you want to update on, on Bass, Wendy. So we, um, we had planned to have a walkthrough last Saturday um, of the trail up in the town forest and um, Mark Reeves emailed us. He said he had eight inches of snow where he lived at 1,200 feet. And we decided maybe that was not the day to go up. So um, we're going to try again for next Sunday and then and not next Sunday, I'm sorry, next Saturday. And as long as the weather is, you know, halfway decent, we're going up and going to go through and just look at the trail. And also, if there's time, have Mark Reeves and um, Dave Rilla look at the bottom portion of um, the Ridgeline Trail and just have a second pair of eyes on that from Bass. And um, once we do that, we'll, we'll have got through the trail walkthrough. Um, we're working on the management plan that's coming along and we are well ahead of schedule right now. So you'll probably get something before June 1st. Um, and we have contacted Vermont Land Trust. Um, they're really slow getting back to us on anything at this point. So um, they do know this is in the works. And I guess, are there any questions? That's about where we're at. Any questions for Wendy? Okay, thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. So you. I, I'll just jump in um, as far as the admin support. What, uh, what Phil had is, has expressed is, um, with the with the management plan and the vast activity going on, um, they've basically doubled their meetings. Um, and he was just reaching out to see if there's something that we could do or the staff could do to help support them with at least uh, uh, producing the the minutes of meetings um, from an administrative standpoint and potentially also uh, assisting in in typing up the draft. But I think they're they're pretty good and correct me if I'm wrong, Wendy, I think Tom's pretty, pretty well set on the, uh, the uh, draft of the plan doing that. Um, Phil hasn't draft mentioned in, anything else to me on that yet. Yeah, the draft is in good shape. Okay. Um, so we don't really need help with that. Well, I, I know there are a couple of people that, uh, that we use right now for doing minutes of meeting. Um, and I guess my question to the board on behalf of Phil is, is that something that we could entertain um adding on to one of those two that are doing the minutes of meetings now for different committees in the and the board if we would want to consider that Vince do you know what the cost would be to do that uh I should but I don't have it right in front of me David okay. uh, to, to be able to do that but I can certainly get that to you right away Anything else on this? I think that's it. Okay, thank you, Vince. Um, Fisher Road Colbert. Update. Uh, Tom, do you want to take the and give the latest update on that? With the yeah, a couple things. Uh, you know, we're using the state infrastructure uh, bank for financing, we were able to secure 1% financing. Uh, they have uh, requested that VTRANS be involved in this, uh, looking, protecting the state infrastructure banks uh, assets for lack of a better term. Um, and so that, that has slowed the process 
down a, a little bit as well. We were hoping to be going out the bid already. So uh, we got a, a pretty positive note this just late this afternoon on VTrans. I'm thinking that uh, they are soon going to sign off on our documents, and we should should be go be good to go on that. Uh, the other one that we have a um, uh, we, we drafted some easement language for uh, Look You Inc for their consideration probably about two three weeks ago now, um, and I spoke to Chip a couple times. He he he's voiced that he is thinks the project is is a, a well designed and good project, but they just don't just not comfortable with the easement language. So I, I, I said, suggested to, to Chip that, you know, give us some language that you would be comfortable with, um, but we haven't received anything yet. So th those two items are, are delaying this, this project. Um, you may recall that we have, a, we have a pretty finite window to do construction and middle of October is, is um, when uh, we have to to uh, uh, stop working in, in those wetland areas, it's a ten week out for the structure. So it's I'm I'm just expressing a concern of, of the timeliness of getting this project done in 2021. Are there any options other than um, with that easement? There, there are, but they cost dollars. You know? Yeah. What does it? Okay. Anything else on this fence? No, I, I think Tom's pretty well given you the uh, the summary of where it's at right now. Okay. The, the, again, the risk. Just to just to reiterate the one point, you know, there's risk of further delay if um, if we don't get through this uh, this easement uh, fairly soon. It's it's already put us a little bit behind the eight ball. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, that's all. It's on. That's all for that. Uh, um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I have those in front of me. Um, I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 21-21 for payroll from March 28, 2021 to April 10, 2021, paid on April 14, 2021 in the amount of $47,052.07. Also payroll warrant 21-G21 with checks 21059 to 21089 in the amount of $29,826.45. March 2021 general journal entries and March budget status report, trial balance and delinquent tax report. Also the March reconciled bank statements for general fund sewer commission and water division. Uh, I, would second. Second, I would second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, minutes of March 1st, 2021 revised. March 15th, 2021 and April 5th, 2021. Um, I think the only one we can do is the March first. Was was uh, were you for were you there for that, David? I've only only missed one, and I can't remember what the date was. Like, uh, well, actually, the end of it last uh, weeks ago. You weren't elected then. Yeah. So you can't vote. We don't have a quorum for the for the motion. So that one there <laughs> will have to pass. Um, Vince, refresh yes. my memory on the March 15th, the revised one. What was that? Uh, there was one word I think that Justin had requested. It was from uh, uh, potential to is, I believe. I can let me double check here. I can pull it up and tell you exactly. March 15th, uh, March, March 1st was the one that was revised, I believe. 
It was the March yeah, 1st. Yeah, can't vote on that one. Yeah, that's the one that was revised, not the 15th. Okay. And so the March 15th, um, you were here for the first meeting, right, uh, Dave? Yes. Okay. So you were here, Flo, and I'm pretty sure I was here for that one. So I have a motion on the March 15th, 2021 minutes. So Go ahead. Oh. Need a second. Second. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. April 5th, I wasn't here. I was. So that one there, uh, we can't vote on that one. Right. So I'll, I'll carry, I'll carry uh, the March 1st revised and the April 5th over to the next meeting, Brad. Okay. Very good, Vince. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, approval of the emergency uh, management plan, uh, Bruce. Yes. Uh, good evening. The, this is the annual update to the uh, town's emergency management plan. And as required by the state uh, to be updated by March for, or May 1st of each year. Um, so there's, uh, the plan has been updated for uh, contacts and uh, some changes to the, uh, uh, some of the uh, appendices in the back of it, some of the uh, hazardous material sites and high risk populations. But uh, the main thing is that uh, we have to have it approved by the, um, the 1st of May for the state uh, to get it. Okay. Um, motion to approve the emergency management plan. I make the motion to approve the emergency management plan. Hear a second. It looks like uh, Mr. Sawyer has stepped away. He's MIA. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Apologize there. I was almost dead and I had to grab this charger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Need a second on the emergency management plan, Dave. I, I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Anything else, Bruce? Uh, just that I'm not sure what if it was sent to you or not. Um, Vince would know. Uh, the in addition to the emergency plan itself, there's an implementation letter that gets signed off uh, by the select board or their uh, designated representative. And uh, in the years past, that was the uh, town administrator, uh, Dana Hadley. Um, so the, there's just a requirement that the person that signs off on that has had a ICS 100 or an ICS 402 class. Uh, so that, that's the, uh, the other part of the uh, package that has to go in together to the, um, to the state. So I, I don't know if that was uh, provided to you or not. It, it was in the uh, package that was sent to the, to the entire board. So you all have a PDF copy of that in, that, uh, in the file that I sent um, for that. Uh, what is the, sorry to jump in Brad, but uh, Bruce, what is the date? Is it May 1st that that has to be in? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, because because I I uh, I have gone online and I've looked at the uh, ICS 100 class that needs to be taken, so that I can uh, I can sign that document. Uh, my intent is to get it completed prior to May 1st, um, so I should uh, I should be able to get that completed so that I can sign this with the board's permission. I'll be I'll have the qualification to be able to sign this before May 1st. And if there's any issues, I've taken the course as well. I've oh, taken, perfect. I've taken quite a few of the ICSs, um, like 100, 200, 300, and I think I did 500. So if you have any issues, I'll be glad to assist. Uh, my recommendation, Flo, if that's okay, 
uh, would be to have you sign that one now uh, so we can get that completed and off our plate. And I'll still can take, I'll still continue to take that so that I can, if it comes up again, I'll, again, with the board's permission, I'll be able to sign. Excellent. And I'll just ask Bruce, do you know, would I need to validate in terms of how often they are done? I know the ICS 100, for example, I've done it every time I've been reminded, but do I need to print off the certificate to determine? Um, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I think this it's on an honor system with the state. Uh, so I, I've never had anybody uh, question it anyway. So okay, very good. Uh, very good. And thank you. Thank you all. Well, while we're, while we're here, I'll entertain a motion to have uh, Flo Smith sign on behalf of the board. I will make a. I would uh, make that motion to have Flo Smith sign uh, the documents uh, for the board, the select board. Your second. Second. And you're willing to do this, Flo. So that's good. Good. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you, you very much, set? everyone. Are you all set now, Bruce? Yes. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Thank you. Hey, Brad, I have one question while the board is still here. Uh, I missed it earlier. Um, rather than have to send the curb cut permit out to the board, uh, could the board authorize me to sign that curb cut permit that we talked about approved earlier today? Is that an option? With the board's approval, uh, I, I believe it is. Uh, otherwise, I don't mind. I can, I can bring it around or, or well, just, the, it's, it's slow getting them back, to be honest. Yeah, the, <laughs> um, I'm good with that, Vince, quite frankly. Um, I'll entertain a motion for that. And then what we'll do is if uh, you find that's not legit, we'll <laughs> we, I will we'll check that. I will confirm that before I sign it, even with your approval. If it's uh, if there's uh, something wrong with uh, doing it in that fashion, then uh, yeah. I will certainly not do it and we'll yeah. find another way to expedite it. Well, okay. we've already approved it. So uh, okay. a, motion, a motion to... Um, allow Vince to sign for the board on the curb cut uh, proposal for Ben and Mashad. Yes. So moved. Second. All, any other discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, Let's see here. Uh, you said there was no executive session, Vince? That, that's correct. Okay. Um, anything on your mind, Dave? No, I've got some thoughts I, it, I, that I want to explore before I bring it up to possibly help the chief up there to the, the hilltop end. Uh, I know that uh, visible presence up there is a big thing that's going to deter anything. Uh, if we have any chance on it, but I, I'm going to do some investigation and I'll come at the next meeting. I'll have some stuff for the board. Okay. Thank you, David. Uh, Flo. I'm good. And thank you, David. Also. Thank you. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Your second. <laughs> any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. Those in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Have a good Thank evening, you, everyone. everyone. Thank you. <laughs>